now that you have the opportunity to try some awesome, fun exercises and activities, um, we want to put it all together. If you're starting a new exercise program, check with your physician, physical therapist, or healthcare team before starting to ensure that it's safe. Try different activities that you like, most importantly, that you enjoy, because the consistency is more important than the quantity, okay? Incorporate different types of exercises in your regimen. It doesn't always need to be the same thing every day. You don't eat the same thing every day, so I'm sure you don't want to exercise and do the same exercise every day, so change it up. Start slow. Increase gradually. Any activity is good. Start with five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. Give yourself a break. It's okay. Enjoy the process. Make exercise a habit. It's better to do it routinely in short bouts and consistent sessions than be the weekend warrior. Use strategies to increase your success. And most importantly, reward yourself. Enjoy the process. Because if you enjoy it, it doesn't feel like work. Thank you so much for your participation in all the exercises through this conference. I hope this encourages you and inspires you to start different routines or start exercising. Contact us if you have any questions and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much. Hi everyone and welcome to the adaptive strength training workout today. My name is Rach uh, and I'll be taking you through a 45 minute strength training workout. We're gonna start with a body scan and some spinal and joint mobility uh, to warm up. We're gonna get into a circuit, more of a strength training circuit, as you can see on the whiteboard, which I'll talk you through in a moment. Uh, and then we'll end with a cool down and I'll send you on your way. All righty. Uh, I'll be giving you adaptations for um, my seated athletes and my standing athletes. So I'm gonna have several variations of all of the movements that we do. And I just encourage you to listen to your own body and move at your own pace. Remember, if you wanna make an exercise harder, you can always add more weight or you could do the movement quicker. And if you wanna make an exercise easier, you can always take away some of the weight or move a little bit slower. Um, regardless of how fast or slow you're moving, I encourage you to move at a pace that feels good for you. Remember, I care more about your alignment and how you're doing the exercises than I do about how quickly you're going or how much weight you're lifting. So at the end of the day, just make sure that um, you're doing this to the best of your ability and, and you're listening to your body. All right, so we'll get started here. We'll come back to a seated or a standing grounded position of some sort. And I'll just have you close the eyes. We're just gonna start with the body scan. And I just want you to start by coming into the breath and just sensing without judging, just sensing where your breath is. Do you feel like you're breathing into your chest? Do you feel like you're breathing into your neck? Or are you able to breathe low into your belly? I'm gonna invite you to place both hands over the low belly. And then try to draw that breath a bit deeper into your body. So see if you can feel your hands drift away, with, drift away from you on your inhale. And then your hands drift back in towards your spine on your exhale. Hands move away on your inhale. And then they come back in towards you on your exhale. And I just want you to continue with that belly breath. This breath helps calm the body. It helps calm the nervous system. Remember the body is more receptive to movement when it's in a more relaxed state. So it's always important to calm your body before going into movement, before going into exercise. Good, and we'll keep the eyes closed here. We're just gonna find a body scan and just noticing 
what parts of your body feel good to you right now? So what parts feel loose, warmed up, strong? And then what parts feel maybe a little tight, restricted, uncomfortable? And let's just start that body scan all the way at the top of your head. So moving down, noticing how your jaw is feeling, your neck, the tops of your shoulders, all the way out through your arms and your hands. How does your chest feel? How does your back feel today? How is the torso and the stomach area feeling? And then if you've got sensation in your hips, can you feel your hips? Can you feel yourself seated in your chair if you're seated? Moving down through your thighs, your knees, your calves and your feet. Are you able to feel the floor or perhaps the base of your wheelchair? Whatever your feet are connected to right now, can you sense can you sense that surrounding area? And lastly, I just want you to set your intention for class today. This can be as specific or as general as you'd like, but just set an intention, something you wanna focus on. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes, good. We're gonna take both arms up to the sky, reaching, really stretch those fingers, let the shoulder shrug and then exhale, find an articulating roll down, whether you're seated or you're standing. As low to the ground as you're able to. Take an inhale at the bottom. And then exhale, rolling yourself back up. <clears throat> Coming all the way back up to the top. Shrug the shoulders up, reach a little bit higher if you can. We're going to rotate slightly to the left here and take an articulating roll down more on the left, more down the left side of your body. Again, pause at the bottom, take an inhale and exhale, peeling yourself back up. Last time, let everything shrug up at the top, reach through your fingers. Can you get even taller? Rotate to the right, articulate down. Trying to roll vertebra by vertebra. Take an inhale at the bottom. And exhale, roll yourself up. Reach one more time at the top. Slowly bring the arms down. Interlace your fingers behind the back if you're able to. And then pull the arms back behind you, opening the chest. If you're unable to interlace your fingers, you can just be reaching behind you. Holding that for a few seconds, getting that nice chest opener stretch there and then releasing and shaking everything off. Great, we're gonna do a couple of things. Again, like I mentioned, just to help calm the nervous system here. So taking your fingertips, you're gonna find just a gentle tapping under your collarbones, all the way under that area. We have a few meridians that run through this area. If you notice that you take a sigh or a yawn here, that's a good sign. It means the body is relaxing. Good, and then we're gonna shake out the hands. And we're gonna take your hands, using your fingernails if you're able to, otherwise your knuckles, and you're gonna give your head a really amazing head scratch. I want you to give your head that head scratch all the way around, following your hairline, up and over the top of your head, the back of your head, the side of your head. Good, and then relax, shake your hands out again. Just notice if anything feels different here. Hopefully you've gotten awareness of, of the head. And then we're gonna take a nice soft fist. This is for those of you that hold tension in your jaw. This is most of the population. Okay, so hands are gonna come to the cheekbones. And you're just gonna softly drag your hands going down from your cheekbones all the way down to your low jaw. 
let the low jaw go slack here as you drag your hands. And you're just gonna do a few passes, dragging down, maybe noticing if one side is tighter than the other side. Last one. Good, and then shake the hands again. Okay, last thing with the face, you're gonna grab your earlobes. If you're unable to grab the earlobes, you can kind of use your knuckles instead. But you're gonna take the earlobes and give them a gentle tug going down and back behind you. Okay, only pull as much as you need to where those earlobes pull back. And then release. Take the tops of your ears and now you're gonna pull up and back behind you. Giving a gentle tug there, no need to overdo this one. We've got some very gentle structures deep to this area. And then relax and shake the hands out again. Awesome. All right, let's move a little bit through our joints here. So we'll just find a couple of shoulder circle rolls. Seeing if you can inhale the shoulders up and exhale down and back. Inhale up and exhale down and back. Good. We're gonna take both arms up to the sky. Let's just find a few double arm circles. Once you make these circles as big as you can, pulling back around you. Both seated and standing athletes will be doing this one. If you're standing, stay standing for this. I'm just gonna be showing you the seated part for, for this part of class here. Good. And then we're gonna bring the arms to a goal post position. Okay, and then I just want you to find this internal and external position with your arms. Okay, so you're just testing that. You're noticing your range of motion here. For standing athletes, you have the option. You can do both at the same time. So now my hips and my shoulders are coming into internal rotation, coming into external rotation, internal and external. So I'm lifting my heels moving from my hips and from my shoulders. If you're able to do both at the same time, go for it. Otherwise you can just stay with one of these. Okay, good. So now we're gonna switch. So left hand is gonna stay up, right hand is gonna come down. So we're just alternating with this. For folks that are standing, you're just gonna be turning both feet in one direction, both feet in the other direction. Try to keep the hips facing forward so the whole body isn't turning. It's just really the legs and that hip joint, that deep hip joint. Okay, so now you're lifting the toes to do this, working some of the muscles in the front of the legs. Okay, good. And relax, shake the legs out, shake the arms out. Okay, let's move the elbows and the knees for our standing athletes. So for our seated athletes, just circling the hands around the elbows. You're trying to open the hands up as much as you can. And then for my standing athletes, again, you can do both or one. Trying to circle the knees around the ankles. Hands can come to the knees if that helps with your proprioception. And if you wanna get really fancy, <laughs> You could do the upper and the lower body at the same time. So we're just working our way through the joints here. Bringing our attention to some of the major joints of the body to help prep, prep ourselves for movement. Okay, good, shake that out. Shake the legs out if you can. Okay, last, lastly, coming to uh, the wrists. So seated athletes are gonna make a fist and you're gonna turn, Twirl your wrists in a circle here. For my standing athletes, you have the option, let me back up a little bit. You have the option to balance on one leg if you're able to, or hold on to a wall or counter next to you, doing some ankle circles, switching directions, switching the feet. If you're doing both at the same time, this is also a really good 
way to test your body's coordination. Okay, and lastly, shake that out. Good. One last thing here. We're going to take the hands. We're going to rub them together. See if you can build some friction, some heat up between the hands. We'll rub the back of the hands like you're giving your hands a good scrub. And then I just want you to take each finger and as if it were a bottle cap, you're going to twist it back and forth a few times. We're just twisting out some of the bones, some of the smaller joints through our fingers. If you're unable to grip your hands, you can use your knuckles just to rub each finger. We're just trying to bring some awareness to this area, twisting back and forth through those knuckles. Okay, when you've done all 10 fingers, give the hands a shake. Give the legs a shake if you're able to. Good, we're gonna come into a little bit of spinal mobility and we're gonna jump into that workout here. Okay, so hands are gonna come up tall. We're just gonna find one more articulating roll down. So as if you were diving forward, peeling yourself down to the ground, take an inhale at the bottom and exhale, roll yourself back up. Good, hands are gonna come out to the side. We're gonna find some side bends here. So we'll side bend to the left, reaching that top arm long. Take an inhale into the open ribs and then exhale back to the center. Good, side bend. If you're standing, you're doing the same thing. Side bend, exhale to the center. Inhale to side bend and exhale center. Inhale. And exhale, inhale, and exhale. Notice as you're doing this, can you keep even weight through both of your sit bones? Okay, last one. Inhale and exhale. Good. We're going to keep the arms out long. And I want you to try to reach the fingertips as far away from each other as you can. So broaden that wingspan. Good. You're going to turn and rotate to your left. What is the farthest thing that you can see behind you right now on the wall? The very farthest thing to the left and then come back to the center. So I want you to physically use your eyes to see what the furthest thing is that you can see. Rotate to the right. Again, what's the farthest thing now to the right that you can see and then center. Go to the left and center and right and center. Few more here. Inhale to rotate. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Last two. Inhale to rotate. Exhale, center. Last one. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Bring the arms back down. Give them a shake. A really big shake this time, like you're trying to get water off of your body. It's good to get wiggles, to get vibration into your body. It's good for your connective tissue. It's good for your muscles. Okay, good. We're gonna bring our uh, spinal mobility into a little bit of uh, what we call a translation. So if you're able to, I'm gonna have you put your hands high, like right above your waist, high on your ribs. If that's hard for you to reach, you can keep your hands on your waist too. So hands are high on the ribs. And I just want you to find, so we're not doing a side bend. We're doing what we call a translation. So notice my shoulders and my ribs stay parallel with the floor. And I'm just gliding my ribs to the left and gliding my ribs to the right. I'm kind of trying to make this staircase with my body in both directions. Okay. The tendency for a lot of people when they do this one is to do more of a side bend where the head and the shoulders tip. But see if you can keep everything parallel here. Okay, the point of this one is to help mobilize the spine. It gives our organs a bit of a massage. Some of you might feel pretty stiff here if this is a movement you don't get into your daily uh, your daily activities. So this can be a good one just to help get things moving in here. 
Good. And then back to the center. Awesome. We'll shake everything out. We're going to connect all of those movements and we're going to take our hands to our ribs again and we're going to hula hoop our ribs around our pelvis. Okay, so notice I'm kind of sinking back, rounding the spine, pulling forward, lifting, sinking back, rounding, pulling forward, lifting. And if you're doing it standing, again, it will look the same. Hula hooping around and then we'll switch directions. When was the last time we hula hooped? Can't even remember. And you're just noticing what corners of this feel sticky or maybe even uncomfortable for you. All right, last circle. And then to the center, relax. One more shake. Okay. So we're gonna jump right into this workout today. We have a Tabata circuit. I'm gonna explain what a Tabata circuit is in a second. We're gonna jump into an eight, eight minute circuit. AMRAP, AMRAP stands for as many rounds as possible. So this means that during that eight minute circuit, you're trying to move as quickly through these four exercises as you can and see how many rounds you get through. It's kind of fun to do this uh, to do this exercise, to do this class, and then maybe come back in a week or two or three and see if you've improved um, and see how many rounds you get through in that eight minute circuit. So it's, it also gives you a base there. And then we're going to finish with one last Tabata circuit, but it's going to be different. We're going to do burpees for that one. Okay. So a Tabata circuit, I'm going to take you, um, I'm just going to briefly, briefly explain some of these. I want you practicing the movement as I'm teaching it to you, and then we're going to get into it. Okay, so uh, Tabata circuit is where you are working for 20 seconds as hard and as fast as you can, and then you're resting for 10, 10 seconds. Work for 20, rest for 10. This moves super quickly, uh, so it might seem easy at first, but it gets harder as you move through it. Our first circuit for that is going to be punches. Okay, so for those of you that are able to make a fist, you're going to bring thumbs over the fingers. For my seated athlete, you're just going to be punching directly in front of you, back and forth as quick as you can. Okay, notice that I'm using the rotation of my torso to throw each punch. I'm not just doing this from my arms, I'm doing this from my whole torso and my whole body. For standing athletes, you're going to be driving that power more from your hips, but it's also going to be coming from your, your torso as well. And you're just going as quick as you can. Okay. So from there, we're going to jump right into the circuit. You have an overhead press. Okay. So seated athletes, you're going to be doing an overhead press. Grab your heavier weight for this overhead press. Standing athletes, you're going to add a squat into that overhead press. Squat and press, squat and press. You're doing that for 20. I'm going to talk you through as we're in the middle of the circuit. So if this is feeling fast for you, don't worry. Once we jump into the circuit, um, I'll be doing it with you. Second exercise is going to be ITYs. Uh, so sorry, I forgot to say this in the beginning of class. The equipment you're going to need is two sets of weights, a heavier pair and a lighter pair. Uh, if that feels unrealistic to you. You can just have one set of weights and you don't even need a set of weights for the lighter exercises. So for example, the second exercise, ITY, you're gonna be hinged forward. You're gonna be finding an I, pulling the arms straight back, a T, opening the arms up into an airplane, and then Y, lifting the arms overhead, okay? You could do this with no weight or you could do this with your small weights, it's up to you. Standing athletes, you're going to be doing the exact same thing, but you're going to be doing this from a hip hinge position. Keep a very slight bend in the knees, and you're doing the same movements just from a hip hinge position. 12 total. So one, two, three, so on. Third exercise is going to be wood chops. So you're going to grab your heavier weight, holding it uh, at a diagonal, and then chopping that wood chopping that weight down into one side. Slowly lift, quickly chop. Slowly lift, quickly chop. 
Standing athletes are doing the same thing. You're back up here. Slowly lift, quickly chop, but you come down into a squat. Slowly lift, quickly chop, coming down into a squat. You are doing 10, 20 total, so 10 on each side. 10 wood chops in one direction, 10 wood chops in the second direction. Okay, fourth and final exercise for my seated athletes is going to be a side bend. Grab your heavier weight. Doing a side bend on one side, 10 on one side, and then 10 on the other side. My standing athletes have a couple of options. You can either do this standing. You could do this standing balancing on one leg, lift the leg opposite to the weight. Okay. Or you could come, if you're feeling really adventurous, you could come into a side plank and you could be doing 10 side bends. This is what we call hip dips, lowering the hips and lifting the hips back up. Okay, so you've got a few options there. Remember, you can make this as easy or as hard as you'd like. Uh, these workouts are kind of a choose your own pace and uh, yeah, move, move at a pace that's good for you. Okay, lastly, we're moving into our last Tabata circuit for burpees. Seated athletes, this is one of my favorites. Seated athletes, you're gonna touch the floor, clap overhead, touch the floor. And if touching the floor is too hard, you can also just tap the lap and come overhead, okay? So whatever is safe for you, do that. My standing athletes, you have a couple of options. You, if you're unable to get down to the floor, you can tap the floor or tap the legs and then clap the arms overhead. If you are able to get down onto the floor, hands come in front of the feet, step or hop the feet back, lower in and out of a push up, step or hop the feet back in, jump as you clap overhead. Okay, and that would be one burpee. And remember that Tabata circuit is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Are we ready? So we have four minutes on the clock. We are starting with that Tabata circuit for punches. Follow my lead here. I'm gonna be with you the whole time. Okay, here we go all out for 20 seconds. On your marks, get set and go. Control your breath here. Find something even and smooth. And stop. You got 10 seconds break here. This moves quickly. And three, two, one, and go. Almost there. And three, two, one, and stop. You're doing great, everybody. You're about a minute in. Three, two, one, and go. And just as a reminder for these punches, the elbow doesn't go completely straight. It helps protect the elbow. So just be mindful of that as you're punching. Three, two, one, and stop. Three, two, one, and go. Try to stay with that pace. Three, two, one, and stop. I have good news, you're halfway. That's two minutes in, you have two minutes left. Three, two, one, and go. Keep 
Keep it up, everyone. Three, two, one, and stop. You're over halfway. Three, two, one, and go. These punches are a great way to get your heart rate up, to get you warm. They're one of my go-tos. Three, two, one, stop. You have one minute left. One minute left. Three, two, one, and go. Keep going, everyone. You got it. And stop. Just gonna show you the standing version for this last set. This is your last set of 20 seconds. And go. Driving that power from your hips if you're standing. Three, two, one, and stop. Nice work, everybody. All right, can we feel it yet? Are you breathing harder? Are you getting warmer? Okay, we are jumping right into that eight minute circuit. Grab your heavier set of weights. We're starting with that overhead press or, did I write that right? Yeah, overhead press or squats for my standing athletes. Eight minutes on the clock, on your marks, get set and go. I'm gonna do one round showing you the seated athlete version. And then my second round, I'll show you my standing athlete variations. You're doing 20 of these overhead presses or 20 squats for my standing athletes. And you're just trying to get through as many rounds as you can in these eight minutes. Okay, once you're done with those, you're moving into I's, T's, and Y's. You're doing 12 of these total. Use a small weight for these ones or no weight. If it's not appropriate for you and your shoulders, you don't really need weight for this one. In fact, I often do these without weight on my own. You're doing 12 of the I's, T's and Y's total. And then from there, we are moving into 20 wood chops total. So 10 on each diagonal. Lifting it up high, swinging it down low and fast. Lifting high, swing low and fast. Again, maybe it's more appropriate for you to use a lighter weight here or maybe even no weight. Allowing your torso to rotate as you swing the weight. Remember, if you're standing, you're dropping this down into a squat.
And then that fourth and final exercise is side bends. 10 on each side. So this is a good one too. So you have your heavier weight for this exercise. And we're working on the side bend, but this is also working on your grip strength, which is really important if you're starting to experience a loss of strength out through your hands, out through your forearms. Just holding the weights in both hands while you're doing this is working on your endurance for your grip strength. Right, it's like carrying a bag of groceries or carrying something heavy that's all really, really good for your grip strength, for your back as well, and for your shoulder. I have good news, everybody. You're four minutes in, you're halfway through this circuit. Can you get through one more round? I'm gonna to try to get through one more round here. I'm gonna show you the standing athlete variations. Okay, so adding a squat at the bottom. If you're unable to find that overhead press, you can just do squats here. That's totally fine too. Okay, so whatever works for you. Making sure you're keeping even weight through both of your feet. Try not to favor your more dominant side. You're doing great, everybody. You're over halfway. Find a pace that's gonna push you these last three minutes, something that feels realistic, that feels challenging. For standing athletes doing ITYs, really important to note that I want you in a neutral pelvis and back. Okay, so we're not slumped over like this. The tail isn't tucked under. We're keeping everything flat and neutral. If it makes sense for you to do these seated, do them seated. You're doing great, everyone. You're doing great. You have two minutes left. Two minutes left. How many more rounds can you get through? How many more reps? Can you get through? Maybe do a check-in with your breath. Make sure you're not holding your breath for any of these movements. You want something consistent and smooth. All right, last 50 seconds, last 50 seconds. Keep it up, everybody. Are you counting how many rounds, how many reps you've gotten through? You have 10 seconds left. 
10 seconds left. Three, two, one, and relax. Okay, team. Grab some water if you need to. We're going to jump right into our last Tabata circuit for burpees. Remember, you do not need weights for this one. This one is more about speed. I'm going to start by showing you the seated variation. And then the last half, I'll show you the standing variation. Make sure you've got enough room. We're going to go right into this. Again, move at your own pace if you need to slow down. But if you can stay with me, here we go. And go. Okay, so as a reminder, tapping the ground, clapping the hands overhead. If you're unable to tap the ground, you can tap your knees. Same style, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Three, two, one, and stop. This is your last few minutes of work here, everybody. Make a count. Three, two, one, and go. Three, two, one, and stop. You're one minute in. Three, two, one, and go. For my seated athletes, I want you thinking about using your legs to push your body back up to a seated position. If you have strength or movement or sensation in your legs, I want you to think about pushing your feet down into the ground to get you back up. Three, two, one, and stop. I think I was a few seconds off for that one. Okay, three, two, one, and go. Three, two, one, and stop. You're two minutes in. Two minutes in, two minutes to go. I'm gonna show you the standing variations. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. This is the standing variation. If you are unable to get down to the floor, if you can add a hop, feel free to add a hop. Three, two, one, and stop. You have a minute and a half left, everyone. Three, two, one, and go. And then also just keeping in mind, three, two, one, and stop. Keep in mind that if you get dizzy at all doing these, take a break, slow down, close your eyes, grab some water, and then come back. Three, two, one, and go. I'll show you the full version here. Three, two, one, and stop. Okay, this is your last 20 seconds of work. Make it count. Three, two, one, and go. Last 20 seconds here, everyone. Ten seconds left. Three, two, one, and stop. Okay. You did it. <laughs> Grab some water if you need to. We're gonna move into a cool down. 
You made it through the hardest part of the workout. Congratulations. Okay, let's come back to a seated or a standing grounding position of some sort. Let's just do a few shoulder circle rolls. And then we're gonna circle the shoulders down and back. We're gonna hold them there. Let's tilt the head to the left, getting a nice stretch through that side. And then we'll tilt the head to the right. Good, back to the center. We'll reach the arms up one last time. On your exhale, take an articulating roll down. Pause at the bottom. Take a few breaths here. And on your next exhale, roll yourself back up. Bringing the hands back down to your lap. Good. Let's give everything one more shake. The arms, the legs, if you're standing. Good, all right, we'll close the eyes. Let's find that same body scan we started class with. So first, just coming to your breath, feel free to put both hands over the low belly again. Can you bring your breath back to nasal breathing? So just breathing in and out of your nose. And then finding that body scan, starting at your head again, noticing how your jaw is feeling, your neck, the tops of your shoulders, out through your arms and your hands. Does anything feel different comparatively to the beginning of class? How's your back feel? How's your belly feel? How are your hips, your legs? Can you feel your feet on the floor or on the base of your wheelchair? Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. Let's take one more inhale, one more exhale and we'll open the eyes. Awesome, thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. Have a great rest of your conference and we'll see you next time.